Adnan, everybody. Hi. Hello. This is Suzanne. Can you hear me? Hi, Suzanne. Yes, Hi. how are you? Very good. How about you? Very well. Thank you. Thank you. Listen, is that a picture of you and your horse on our on our Soul Answer site? No, I think the other Suzanne. The other Gosh, I'm yeah. going to get you. Oddly two. enough, there's two Suzannes. Okay, so are you in Ottawa? No, I'm in Dallas. Dallas. You're in Dallas. Oh, well, I thought that being in Dallas, you would have the horse. <laughs> I know. I, it, it was up to my husband. We would have five horses. What? <laughs> if we were up, it was up to my husband, we would have five horses. Oh, my he gosh. Loves them. <laughs> so, Sounds like he's fun. He's a horse guy. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'm glad you're here. <laughs> Thank you. Mhm. So, who else is here? Hari Inder are here. Hi, Hari Inder. How are you? I'm okay, thank you. Good. Good to have you. Who thank else you. is here? Hari Munder. Hi, Hari Munder. How you doing? Good. Good. Are you in Wyoming? I'm, I'm back in Juneau. Oh, okay. Good. Do you like Why? it? What? Do you like oh. it in Juneau? Are you happy there? Very much, yes. How oh, good. Did you have another question for her? Like, why is she happy in Juneau? Uh, no, I, I just wanted to know that she was happy because I knew she made a move up there, and I was hoping she adjusted well. Oh, that that that's um, Huddy Das, and oh, uh, she oh, likes it right. too. <laughs> <laughs> mm. Thank you. I got that wrong. Sorry. That's, That's okay. Uh, Huddy Munder has been there for at least 30 years, haven't you? Yeah, at least, almost almost 40, 40 years oh. now. Oh, my God. <laughs> okay, thank you. Okay, mm-hmm. who else is here? Tomas and Rahmane. Welcome. Welcome. Thank you. And who else? Carol. Hi, Carol. Carol from Juno. Welcome. <coughs> and who else? This is Lucinda. Oh, Lucinda, welcome. Um, we're, <coughs> excuse me. We're so happy to have you. I'm glad to be here. So, how has your move been? Is it kind of culture shock? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> What, what, in what way, if we could be so bold to ask? Oh, everything. Uh, there's the freedom to walk about, the freedom of choice. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. People ask for your opinion. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Freedom to get up and go to bed when you want. <laughs> yes, the the freedom to stay up late, uh, you know, to go to bed whenever you want and, and to stay in bed if you want. And not have to be forced out of bed at 4.30 in the morning. Mm. Although sometimes the rest of us need to be forced out of bed at 4.30 in the morning to do our <laughs> sadhana. <laughs> I, I, the, food is, the food is a big difference. Oh, I'm able to bet. choose. I'm what? able to go out in my garden and pick little cherry tomatoes and tomatoes off my vine and... and uh, I'm able to eat good food that I know doesn't have pesticides and poisons and toxins and everything all over it. And, wow. And that's, um, I can put food into my body that I know is going to help me and be healing to me and and not be toxic. And that's one of the, the many things I learned about prison is that people had been buying distressed foods and... Um, Distressed. Things that were not fit for human consumption and feeding that to prisoners. Mm-hmm. And people get sick when they eat bad food. <laughs> so. What does that mean? They find people that is, they find food that's too poisonous that they can't sell? There was a, a big investigation about it a couple of years ago in Oregon. That people had been buying distressed foods, foods that had expired, foods that were toxic and no longer, no one else would buy them. But they saved money um, by buying those things oh. and feeding them to prisoners. And the problem is, is it makes us sick. 
the food we were eating made us sick and uh, wasn't oh good for us. But people were saying we're lucky that people fed us at all and <laughs> you know, oh be my great. God. For, oh, be hello. Great for it. <laughs> but anyway, so th- there there are many things. The people begged me. The people who are especially who are um, long term. Uh, lifers, uh, people mm-hmm. who were with long sentences, begged me. They said, if you do anything else when you get out, please tell them about the food. Help us to have some decent food. Oh. You know, because it's killing them. It's killing people. Oh, my gosh. It's not It's not good. And mm-hmm. I think it would. we all had asked if we could just do what they used to do, is to plow up the space around the, the prison and actually have, tend our own gardens. Mm-hmm. grow our own food, we'd be much, much healthier and better off instead of having government contracts with people that people made money off of prisoners mm-hmm. if they would just let people grow their own food, and then we wouldn't be putting pesticides on it and could actually have a nice, healthy diet. And that would go a long way towards people feeling that they were doing good things to their body temples. Wonderful. Well, uh, it, maybe it's a political decision. What do you think? Oh, I know that, unfortunately, a lot of the world out here runs on, you know, who's got the money, follow the money. Mm-hmm. Um, and I always ask myself, okay, in this situation, what is the real motivation? You know, who serves to benefit and who's who's hurt by this? Mm-hmm. And when I see people that are hurting from something, and then I see who's benefiting, then I question the morality of it and the ethics of it and... Um, Right. So I, you know, and and there there is a place I know somewhere in the Bible that it came clear to me when I was about in fifth grade that you can't serve both God and money. You have to make a choice. <laughs> That's you have to true. make a choice. But um, anyway, um, you no, know, there are many things that that are that stand out to me. The food is is a big one because mm-hmm. I'm now able to eat food that is good for me and healthy and nutritious for me and helping my cells and and um, that well, is something that concerns the women there. Good. Well, God bless you, dear. We're happy you are, too, and we are going to be grateful <clears throat> for the freedom that we have to choose and also add our heart breath for all the people in all the prisons who deal with this. So everybody just heart breath for a minute. And inhale, (coughs) and exhale. Thank you. And who else is here? Satsundri. Hi, Satsundri. Hello. How are you? I'm okay. Good, good. And who else? Haridas Kar. I beg your pardon? Haridas Kar from Juno. Oh, this is the one who moved. <laughs> so, to answer the question, how has your move been? It has given us opportunities to practice patience. <laughs> to practice what? It's given us opportunities to practice patience. <laughs> God bless you. You know there are lots of stories behind that one. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but we're okay. still smiling and laughing. Oh, good. I'm glad. <laughs> okay. Bless you, dear. Okay, so let's get started now. <clears throat> so sit straight. Palms together if you can. Attention at the third eye. Long, deep breath. Relaxing. Relaxing. Relaxing into the third eye, really understanding what you're connecting into. This incredible chain of teachers, as well as into the infinite. Inhale. 
Feel it open, let it expand, <clears throat> let yourself be healed. another, to the full group, whether everybody's on this call at this moment or whether they are listening to the recording, please join heart to heart as one big total heart.
just realize what might have happened if in the last debate Mr. Obama received a lot of heart breath. Don't forget to continue this, okay, while we're on our call as well as all through the week. Okay, so I'm asking who is here. Well, it is sometimes hard to differentiate because everybody is always here. (laughs) Okay, so who is going to talk? Well, uh, it seems as though there is good around us in Baba City Chand. It's very interesting in tuning in because good around us has this like calm, all pervasive power that just is steady, steady, steady and loving. And uh, Baba Sidi Chand <clears throat> seems to have the, have the power and the ability that's more like lightning, that is more, uh, how can I say, energetic, dancing, jumping, um, <clears throat> tickling our funny bones. And so they make an incredible pair. They are a pair. He says, just start talking. Okay, sir. <laughs> okay. <laughs> So, okay, so what we have before our eyes today <clears throat> is one holy planet. This is one holy planet that does not, in your terms, have an end or a beginning. He says your planet, <clears throat> he says it's actually a figment of the cosmos. Uh, what he's talking about is what we would call a figment of imagination, but it, it is a particle of consciousness, he's calling it. He says it is that particle of consciousness that is ready for an upgrade. He says, now you all have read, seen, heard, he says, so many predictions about what is what is happening now and what is going to happen in the future and what shall have happened. He says, don't put any stock in any of it. (laughs) Oh, well, sir, what should we do about that? He says, forget it. He says, jump over the broom, so to speak. He says, he says, cross over the waters. He says, he says, all predictions are wrong. All predictions are wrong. He says, so that is why Yogi Bhajan never went into too much detail because because he says you cannot describe what will be in the apparent future by anything that is descriptive in nature. He says anything that describes, he says, is qualified by what you already know. He says there there it is. He says that is the cusp of our knowing. He says what we have known will not be known in the future. Again, what we have known will not be known in the future. He said that is the reason why it is so important to rely upon your intuition and to reply and to rely on your sadhana and to take care of one another. <clears throat> he said there's nothing else. Um Excuse me, I'm running this down. He says, he says, you are all characters of goodwill. He says, that is very well known and that is very well documented. You are characters of goodwill. He says, that is your ship to carry you across. He says, the most important thing is that you stay tuned in to that almighty that is you. That is, a, he says, that is the flowering of you. That is a cosmic whole. 
that it is the pure intelligence that holds all, that carries all. He says there's nothing else. He says there's no way to predict what will happen. He says because it is so far out of your realm of experience that there is no way to coalesce it, to bring it to a head. So I'm just saying, sir, can you, I'm <laughs> not giving up, sir, can you give us a little hint? He says, no, 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 no. He says, I'm not going to give you a hint because you will focus your minds on it uh, from a point of view of what you have known. And he says, by that very ridiculous situation, it will take you further from knowing than closer to knowing. He says, do you understand that? He says, so, he says, the best way to get ready is to follow your intuition, follow your soul, follow our guidelines, be very alert and quick to following what Yogi Bhajan would call the unknown is known to me. In other words, you are comfortable, you are at ease in following your guidance. He says, if you are not, if you fight it, he said, if you are prejudiced towards what only has been known to you, he says, you will miss the ship. He says, do you understand that? He said, you have reached a point in continuum in which the only option is to follow truth. You can no longer follow old experience. You can no longer follow old cultural values, old storylines. He says, they will not work. They will not work. He says, now when you follow this, this guide, this leadership of truth that comes through your soul, that comes through your effervescent being, he says, when you follow that, he says, you may think that this is about, it's as easy to follow this as standing on your head and walking down the street. He says, but give up the thinking. You see, he says, that is, uh, that would be relying on old experience. He says, there's no way that you can tell what your soul is going to tell you, what it's about, what it is telling you to do, where it is motivating you, where it is holding you, where it is keeping you, where it is giving you safety and succor. He says, where it is, uh, allowing you, he says, to hold hands with your brethren, he calls it, and uh, feel the heart of one another. He says, in this transition, you will find that you are no longer separate. He says, this is the biggest revelation there ever could be. He says, you know now about being social people. You know about loving and being in love in love as well as being loved. You know about that. You know about the heartbreak. You know about the fulfillment. You know about the habits and the expectations. He says, where you are going is far beyond that. He says, there will be no difference between your heart and what you now call the other's heart. No difference between your well-being and the other's well-being what we call the others. He says, this is the group consciousness for which you have been prepared. You have been prepared through your compassion, through your consciousness. He says, these are the easy first steps within that, within that tr trial, within that trail. He says, the blessing is yours. He says, the next step is total authenticity and not fighting not fighting trying to remain separate in other words not feeling your brother's pain not upholding your sister's heart he says you will understand the gift of the one heart 
He says, a small little exercise that we do at the beginning of the class. He says, when you all share, tune in to each other and to the group as a whole. He says, my dears, that is a truth. But that is only a small step, a small baby step as the beginning. As the beginning of where you are leading to. He says, I've given you a lot of information now to point you in that direction. He says, the course is worthwhile. The course is natural. The course is open. The course is free. And, of course, there will be many who will not take this course. He says, there will be a certain amount of pain in that category. He says, but it will be for you to understand and to respect each one's free will. He says, you must not, he says, you must offer every bit of help, every bit of succor, every every bit of kindness and truth that is requested from you to those who would like to be taught, to those who would like to be guided, and who would like to hold your hands along the way. He says, this is what is meant to be a teacher. And every one of you is a teacher. He says, I want to be very, very firm in this. Every one of you is a teacher. But if people, if the fragments of your oneness, he says, if they refuse, he says, you must kindly, kindly respect that. On the tallest order, he says, because respect and freedom are at the base, are at the foundation of this truth. He says there are to be no crusades, no crusades saying, if you want to be saved, follow this. He says that will only break the back of the camel. He says you must not do that. On the other hand, you must open up your goodwill and make available what you have to offer, what you know, what comes through you, what is awareness, the awareness that comes out of the vacuum of the Almighty and flowers in your heart, in the group heart, in the cosmic heart, in the cosmic flow. He says at this point you do not know what you know. He says, please breathe, do heart breath, and let that recognition come upon you. It doesn't have to be words. It doesn't have to be experiences. But allow, allow permission for yourself to know what you think you do not know. Just allow that feeling, that permission, that openness. He says, please do it. He says, all of you, all of you are gifted. At times you may reject it due to past experiences, past lives. Oh, my God, how could this be me? Blah, blah, blah. He says, it's time to drop that. He says it might have served to protect you in certain ways, allow you to fit in, so to speak, in this Piscean culture. He says, but it will not serve you in the future. It will not serve you in the future. Remember, you are neither high nor low. You are. He says, feel that now. You are. Feel the expansiveness of you are. I am. And let it be. This is who you are. And you are fully grateful for the gift of being able to express, to feel, 
to glow, to expand this knowledge, this truth, this vibration that comes through you. In this regard, you will all understand that you are all healers. That is, your vibration will help to process those who are having a little bit more difficulty. He says you will not control them, but you will be free, open, and available as a mechanism that may kindly help others process. He says, just as when Lucinda was in jail, her aura, her energetic self, acted as a processing plant for the auras of others. And she is missed. Keep up the breath, please. He said she already told you what happened when she did heart breath. It changed the consciousness. It changed the energetic self the yearnings, the longings, the anger of others. He says, now understand that she has been in the forefront of this change. So it is up to you, to each one of you, to allow this change, this cultural shift that she has already been through and will continue to go through, allow it to occur within you. As you. Allow it to occur. And he said, if you find that your soul or one of us is speaking directly to you and for others, just in the same way this girl, meaning me, just in the same way she operates, he says, it is up to you to do the same. He says, you know this helps you. He says, imagine if you would allow this to spread to others, what you call others. In fact, you are all extensions of one another. You are the same. You are... <clears throat> it is a composite of the whole. He says those words are not, don't really describe it, he says, but you don't have words for it. <clears throat> he says each one of you is a is a surface of the prism of the whole. He says same energy, <clears throat> shining, shining in different ways. Different attitudes. Different timing. He says your... Excuse me. He says your collective is about to make the leap. He said, do you remember when you used to play that game when you were little and there was everybody held hands and then the person in the middle started spinning and it accelerated it accelerated to so that the ones on the furthest end were going 100 miles an hour and there was nothing they could do but spin off he says this transition is fairly similar. He says that is the reason why it is so important to remain at the center, at the center of your own being. He says you are not going to have a worry about anybody along this continuum, but you will be available, available to allow the closeness to anyone who comes towards the center with you. Okay, so breathe and feel that now. This is you as a teacher, as a healer, as a center point, whatever you want to call it. This is what you have committed to, frankly, 
in your journey through lifetimes, you have all prepared over and over and over again. You have found a stable path. He says you may no longer dawdle in unkindness, in separation, in dogma. You may not dawdle there. You may not judge up and down. You may not try to take advantage or best advantage. You may not. He says there is no time left to do that. To the extent that you allow your mind to run wild and not be in the center of this game, what do we call it, whip, He says, as you allow your mind to not be in the center, you move yourself out to the end position. Do you understand? He says that's really your prerogative, your privilege, to place yourself anywhere along that line that you want to. He says, but why would you? You have the free choice. You have the free choice of placing yourself anywhere that you want along that line. In that regard, why not head for the pure center? Why not head to living in the guidance, the quality, the dimension of what you might call the unknown becoming known? And to follow that assiduously. To not give up at any point, but to be free and open, as you call it, channels, manifestations. To be truly humble to that light that flows through you, that light of pure intelligence, pure knowing. Why wouldn't you do that? He says, so, my very dear and sweet ones, he says, now is the time to let go of the charges of unhappiness, of what you might call impurity, but in fact it is just an unknowing. This is the time to forgive every little piccadillo Every little strangeness, every little and big hurt, forgive every separation on every level. Forgive deeply, not with your mind, deeply meditatively, with your whole energetic structure. Forgive, forgive, forgive yourself, forgive the one who, uh, with whom you are having fisticuffs, Forgive, which untangles, unmires your very soul, your very essence. He says it dissolves that web that keeps you in trial and tribulation. He says, do you understand that? Over lifetimes, we have participated in a way that has kept us tied in knots. He says, this is neither bad nor good. It was a necessity. He says, you have gained so much by your transformations through karma. He's saying, uh, you can look this up. He says on this girl's website, that is soulanswer.com slash karma, K-A-R-M-A, dot html you can look up how karma works over time he says the laws of karma he says will not give way but he says what we are moving into is a new crucible a new dimension of the laws of cause and effect can you imagine 
He says it is what you might call a new book of karma. Or the Akashic Records. Heart breath with this, please. Heart breath. Good. As you do heart breath, by your forgiving, your very deep forgiving, allow yourself <clears throat> to sink into or to evaporate into the unknown. And as you do that, also please allow, do not create, allow a full circle of allowing the unknown to then become known to you. Bit by bit, piece by piece, as needed. He says you are like He says you are like soldiers being marshaled on a field by instant command. Sinking into the unknown. And allowing the known, allowing the unknown to become known. In other words, acting on it, perceiving it, being it. Instantaneously, without even, it's sometimes without even processing it through your mind. Simply allowing in the moment. This preciousness is you. This fulfillment, this abundance is the unknown, the vast unknown becoming known. Breathe with it, know it. And he says, please write down your experience now so you do not lose track of it. Good. He says, now, which of you will share? Oh, he's asking if Sadhanam is on the line. Sadhanam, are you here? Okay. <clears throat> so who can share? Oh, yes, I know there's somebody there. Just feel <clears throat> Babaji poking you. Who's up? Well, I would share. I'm Suzanne. Oh, good. Uh, Thank you, Suzanne. Well, don't get excited because <laughs> I'm only sharing because it was simply color, purples and greens, and I just allowed it. I was hoping for just a whole bunch of information, but I guess mm -hmm. it is just in the allowing, and I came out with, then I just allow. Because that's all I got. How fabulous. There's really? the truth. <laughs> There's the truth. Okay. <laughs> Bless you, dear. He says all the information is contained in the colors. He says just keep, oh. up, this, keep up the practice. And and as needed, the the colors, the information contained within will guide you. Oh, thank you. Mm hmm. Thank you. Now, who else can share? I can share. Oh, good. Who is this? This is Carol. Yes, Carol. Um, 
what came to me was that the unknown feels like a giant reservoir. Oh, uh uh-huh. Instead of a magician pulling the same rabbit out of the same hat, we're going to open the reservoir and allow what comes to be of use. Wow. (laughs) Incredible. And do you have any emotion attached to that or not? Well, it's kind of exciting, isn't it? (laughs) Yes, it is. (laughs) Yes, it is. So I want to tell you a story about what happened to me. Um, In Alaska, we have a permanent fund dividend check every year. So this year it was $878 was just instantly spread across every person in the land, every man, woman, and child. Mm Mm-hmm. So the place gets kind of giddy and frivolous with all of that energy just exploding in the state at one time. Wow. So the day after this money, it, the day after the direct deposits happened, I was at the bus station on the Friday evening, and I was waiting for the bus, and it was, it was a real nice evening, and there was a group of teenagers being themselves. And they weren't rowdy and they weren't malicious but they were indulging in horseplay and all the all the things that you that you attribute to teenage behavior and one of one boy was urging his friend to stick his money back in his pocket those girls were just trying to get to him because he had money and they didn't really like him anyway and come over here I want to talk to you <laughs> and the girls were all fluttering around and the kids were doing this and that they'd leave and they'd come back uh-huh. and it, I decided that maybe these children needed an extra kind of a charm for the evening, so I decided I'd stand there and do heart breath next to them. Uh-huh. So I did. And slowly but surely, their horseplay grew more outrageous but still not malicious. They were all still together in this little group. But slowly uh-huh. the whole group moved towards me. Oh, it really? Moved towards me, and the horseplay got more outrageous, and I almost thought that I should put my hand out and, you know, not let them hit me if, you know, mm-hmm. they were going to be careless because I didn't want a confrontation with them. It was mm-hmm. just doing this. And it was only today during this meditation that I realized that what had happened is that they unconsciously became part of the heart, the heart breath so that all of, all of their hearts were already hooked together, but then they let me in so there, I was in no danger of them bumping into me. They knew exactly where I was all the time. Oh, my goodness. And I thought it was amazing. I've told the story to several people already. I love that. I love that. So we are all becoming one heart. Mm -hmm. Yes, that is the true way. That is the only way. We are one heart. And that is that. Well, that's fabulous. Thank you so much, dear. You're welcome. Yeah. Now, who else can share? Good morning. This is Padam Dion. Hi, dear. Where are you now? Are you still in New Jersey? No, I'm in Venice, California. Oh, okay. See, it's important that we ask every time. <laughs> <laughs> no, hopefully I'll be around here for a little bit. Oh, um, good. I couldn't connect last week. It was literally like my, I, I didn't connect to the schedule in my my head. I had to write it down, and I even forgot I got reminded. It was so funny because I got reminded, and I connected to the call exactly when you were seen to Baba Siddhi Chan and Guru Ram Das, who's here, and I almost said, I'm here. <laughs> I mean, literally, I connected at that time, and I'm <laughs> laughing, but I'm not. You know, something happened this morning, and it's funny because I haven't been doing my heart breath as regularly. And for me, in my experience, you know, I'm marcenary, so I learned the hard way. Um, I know sometimes how useful something is by when I forget to use it and don't use it, and I see the difference in my life. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. and I've been seeing the difference the last 10 days that I haven't been using it regularly, just very sporadically. And as soon as I started to do heart breath here today, I started to cry, which I needed to because something happened this morning. And mm-hmm. um, a bird tried to fly into the space where I'm staying. It knocked itself against the glass. I went to pick it up, and it died in my hands. And Oh, my. And I, it was funny when you were talking about the unity because I always seem to process first through animals. I'm really connected to them. 
to mm-hmm. animals, to plants, to even crystals, to everything that's earth-related. And mm-hmm. I, I am unconsolable right now about this. And I know it's just all in divine order. And so I call him Guru Ramdas, and I did the calls and everything, but I, it, it shook me up. It really mm. shook me up. And I, I guess that kind of a question that I'm putting out there into the ethers, into the call, into all the other teachers that are in the call is I've always been empathic, but now that's really getting beyond empathic. You know, it's like so connected. And mm-hmm. as we connect to each other's hearts and um, into the heart of the land, of the earth, of, of, the, of what surrounds us, all the connection, how do we manage when there is that the death the 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 the, the pain of being alive or or the people who are more imbalanced how do we i mean what if anything can we do to be able to manage that i mean i don't want to i i the, i had uh, moments like this before this mm-hmm. this year you know i remember when i had a a goldfish that died and i was all the way in home depot and i could feel it dying and it was mm-hmm. oh it was Horrible. I mean, it was just debilitating. Mm. Okay, now, since you are sensitive, yeah, I'm going to ask you to turn tune in to Baba City Chand and Guru Ram Dass right now. Sit yes, 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 they're here, they're here, and they're almost laughing at me, yes. <laughs> okay, so what do they have to say? Oh, what I'm hearing is that... Um, this heart that I vibrate in this body is just one of many hearts that I have, and I can handle it all. Good. And so, sirs, what is what is the way to handle it? Can you give her some more precise direction on how to handle it? There's only one way. It feels like more breath, which is more love. More breath, more heart breath, which is love. Yes. And what about giving it to them? To handing them. Handing the dead bird to them, handing the dead goldfish to them. What yeah, else? yeah, definitely. That's like, that's instinctively what I did this morning, yeah. Good, good. He says because in our small natures, we cannot, we cannot take on what is happening. Yeah, if we tried to take on what was happening, the pain would be too great, uh-huh. and we would be in a constant state of shock, which would, he said, he calls it invalidate the connection with them. Okay. So the only thing to do is to consciously give it to them. Consciously give it to them and let them handle it. So every time that I'm in the presence of, of the pain, be it my own or those that are surrounding me to just keep giving it away, keep giving it away. To them. To them. To them yeah. or to the unknown. Or yeah, to them. No, they're with me. That. They're my compadres. Exactly. And do heart breath. Yes. Okay. Thank Good. You. Thank you so much, dear. Does anybody else have any questions about that? Good. Well, thank you, dear. Okay, we have Dear Yan? Yes. Uh, I just had another bird story to share. We had a, a dog attack one of our turkeys, and it was hurt so badly that we had to slaughter it. And in the midst of the attack, the rooster disappeared, and one of the hens started roosting continuously sitting on these eggs. So I stopped taking them. The, and then the rooster, a few weeks the ago, hen. Uh, sorry, the hen. The, the rooster okay. disappeared. It must have been eaten by coyotes. Uh-huh. So um, I stopped taking eggs from this one hen who seemed to, in the face of death, what she was doing was sitting on the last of the fertilized eggs. And about three weeks ago, I went in to bring her some food, and there was a cracked egg out in the little hallway of the, mm-hmm. of the roost. So um, it looked black inside, and I thought it was... I thought it was rotten, so I picked mm-hmm. it up and it started peeping. And right now, this little peeper is, in, is on my arm. I don't know if you can hear her. Yes. <laughs> and um, so it was just, it's this little miracle life that came out of the death. 
I would How have wonderful. eaten that egg if I would have eaten the egg if the rooster hadn't died. But because the rooster was gone, I kept the egg. And here she is chirping to you. Can you hear her? Yes, how precious, how precious. Isn't that amazing how nature knows what to do? To carry yeah. on. This, to carry on. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Wonderful story. Here again, I have a, another story. This is Suzanne. Yes. It's a bird story as well for the lady who sad. I also had a bird run into the window and ran out to pick it up. And uh, it took about five or ten minutes, but she came to and was able to fly away. So sometimes they live. Oh, so sometimes. Good. good. <laughs> okay, thank you, Suzanne. Thanks. Yeah. We appreciate that. So there are yeah. all possibilities. Listen to all yeah. those possibilities. <laughs> How fabulous. And he says, please take heart that there are all possibilities. And he says, the important thing is that we live in the present so that we don't project what the possibility might be, what the outcome might be. Live in the present. Do what is given to you in the present. And see what happens. You heard three stories with, uh, with, that expressed each different possibility that came through from the unknown. So God bless you all. It's wonderful being with all of you. And the guys, wait a minute, they're holding you in a certain way. Let me just see what this is. They're holding you... uh, Sort of in the strength of center is what they're doing now. Please allow yourself to feel that. They're holding you in the strength of center, which is unlimited. He says the further you go from center, the more limited you become. So they're all holding you in the strength of the infinite center. So please put your palms together and sing this to one another. Inhale. May the long time sun shine upon you, all around you, and the beautiful light within you guide your way. And bow to your most infinite, most precious center. Bless you all. Talk to you soon. Thank you. Have a wonderful week. Mom, thank you. Mom, thank you.